Well, hello and welcome to the Healthy Wealthy Wise Show. I'm your host, Corey Sievers, and on behalf of everyone here in the Savvy Team Wellness community, congratulations for joining us here on this particular episode, this particular Savvy Favorites episode of the Healthy Wealthy Wise Show. So we've got a great one lined up for you this time. So also, Happy New Year. That's in order. So I hope you're looking forward to setting 2020 up to be your best year yet. And I hope this information that we'll be sharing with you during the course of this particular episode is exactly what you need to, or part of what you need anyway, to help you set up and get things right for 2020. So what are we going to be covering in this particular episode of the show? We'll be talking about, first of all, in healthy, how to burn fat, uh, lose weight, and look your best. We'll actually give you a bit of an overview of our detoxification and weight management programs, just so you have some hints and tips to set things up right to trim down and shape up during 2020. In the Wealthy and Wise segment, we'll be covering some more savvy favorites. We'll be talking about three surprisingly simple principles for success and the choice we all have, but only few apply. Mm, the choice we all have, but only few apply. And these will be some really good thoughts for you here in the new year. So happy new year. We want to help you make 2020 your best year yet. So look, if you are new to what we do here in the Savvy Team, we're all about helping you reach that next level of health and lifestyle. So come join us. I think you'll be glad you did. So let's jump on into this first segment where we're covering how to burn fat, lose weight and look your best. And so this is actually a segment, a live segment uh, where we, where I did this class in front of a, a room full of people that were all setting their goals to make, you know, to really shed fat detox and start to, to tone up. So let's go and have a look at that right now. Thank you, and thank you, everyone. Yeah, it's it's my pleasure to take you through this information. You know, as far as savvy weight management, weight management in general, general health, we really do believe that. You know, the support that we offer, the solutions, the guidance can help you reach that that next level as such. So we are talking here specifically about weight management. And, you know, it's, it's a that time of year when there's a tendency to think about what am I going to do for the year to make changes? Uh, and so I guess as you'll, you'll get a, a bit of a glimpse of what we offer isn't just about when we talk about weight loss and wellness. Our underlying philosophy really is more about improving your overall well-being and having weight loss be sort of like a positive side effect as opposed to just losing weight. Because this is one of the biggest challenges most, out, most people out there, whether we're talking about from a medical point of view or even from the natural point of view, focus on treating the symptoms of, a, of a, an ailment, whether it be you know the problem of weight management or whether it be some other issue. And so when you simply treat the symptoms, for example, weight gain, without looking at the underlying causes, then you're more likely to yo-yo back. So there have been a whole bunch of different discoveries that outline some of the simple obstacles that are causing you from, you know, causing you to have a lack of success in maintaining your weight over the long term. And if you just focus on losing weight, pretty much like everyone out there is teaching you to do right now at this time of year, work out more, eat less, all those sorts of things, you are, more, you are not likely to address the underlying issue and that's what causes the yo-yo effect. So, you know, our goal really is to give you a really good overview of, of what we believe weight loss and weight management and wellness is about and then, you know, have, if you'd like us to guide you to a high level of wellness, we can certainly do that. This is a key issue that I guess I wanted to talk to you about before we move into talking about weight management. Are you looking to just lose weight or would you prefer to create a healthy body and a stable weight for the long term? This is what we call our illness wellness continuum. And so most of the time, the treatment paradigm is sort of saying you've got some sort of signs and symptoms showing up before you do anything about it on the way to disability and premature death. Let's take it away from weight loss and just look at any other illness. And so the goal of most treatment systems, medication or even most natural therapies, is to get you to a neutral point. So to get you to not sick, not to help you reach a higher level of wellness. So what we're, the wellness paradigm is about and what we teach 
is even if you're currently doing things to take care of the signs and symptoms, let's take you beyond the neutral point through your awareness, your education, your growth to reach that high level of wellness. So whatever you're currently doing, you can start to apply tactics and tools and strategies to help you go beyond just not sick. You know, we don't just want to reach not fat or not sick. We want to reach a high level of wellness. That's what we believe anyway. So we've got to look and sort of rewind and go, what are some of the underlying causes of most ill health today? In all of our research, essentially there are two fundamental or underlying issues that sort of cause, in a way, most poor health situations. And that is excessive toxicity in the body and a lack of nutrition. So you just think about it. why do you, why are you told to improve your diet? Why would we want to improve our diet? Because the diet would provide us with more of the micronutrients if it's a healthier diet and less of the nastiness, the chemicals and everything. So in essence, improving your diet's about decreasing toxicity and increasing nutrition. We just want to make sure that you optimize that beyond just diet. And that's why we believe in supplementation as well. So achieving, we believe, we can almost boil it down to saying it's as easy as one, two, three. Achieving optimal well-being, maintaining healthy weight, and feeling your best could be as easy as one, two, three. Decreasing chemicals from all avoidable sources, increasing nutrition, inclu including supplementation, so aiming for what we call the 90 nutrients, and optimizing your body's detox pathways. Anyone got an idea of what one detox pathway might be? The skin, that's a nice positive one to mention in a public forum. There are other ones that we, our guts and everything. If they're not all functioning, our, sorry? The entire bathroom. Okay, exactly, all right. If, we, if those pathways are not, if the sewerage treatment isn't working well, then it backs up and causes more of the toxicity and everything. That's why it's like one, two, three. So the question is, are you willing to change? Sometimes when we talk about um, weight management, it's all about fitness. You're not exercising enough and you're eating too much. So, yeah, I'm into fitness. Fitness whole pizza in my mouth. <laughs> you don't have to exercise and be into fitness, but of course, if you're wanting to maintain a healthy weight, there are some changes that, that will need to be made because what got you where, to where you are now isn't what get, what's going to get you forward. But sometimes they don't need to be that dramatic. But you do have to make changes. The 90 day think about it program has guaranteed results. Okay, so the before and after picture, you've seen them before and after pictures. But you know, how long the question is, how long do you want to think about it? If you're like me, I thought about it for a long time. I was like recently, uh, well, up and down, up and down, but I recently posted a uh, some of my results and like putting it out that like, okay, I'm like a builder, the builder's house who's never completed because I'd been teaching weight management programs for 12 years and never got myself into shape. Well, I was up and down and I probably, I wasn't obese or most people would say you're fine and everything, but in the typical BMI classifications and everything, I was overweight, I was one of the statistics. And I knew this stuff. So I get it if you don't even know some of the information I'm sharing, how you can get yourself where you're unhappy with the way you are. But our goal as an organization is to help you make those changes. So one of the things that we offer is what we call our fat loss maximizer toolbox. And we actually have this as a free online class. It's a, it's a longer class as we go through a whole bunch of different things that can help you. But why do we talk about a toolbox? Well, we believe that, you know, we're all the same in terms of the fact that we have we have, you know, we have a body, we're, bi we're biologically similar, but we're all different. And so sometimes we need different tools. Ladies, if we use the right tool, we get the right results. What is this? A hair straightener. It's a hair straightener. Okay. So who, who's never used one of those before? All right. Try to do it. Who basically says, my hair's perfectly straight, I don't need a hair straightener. Or, I don't care, I leave my hair a la naturale. So, you know, we need the right tool for the right results. What about this one? What's this one? This is a curler. 
So the right tool gives us the right result. So hair straightener, hair curler, curler, is it true that some of, isn't it weird, some of us want to straighten our curls, some of us want to curl our straight hair. <laughs> we're all the same, but we're all different. We all have hair, but we all have different desires, needs, underlying physiology, DNA, everything. So, okay, sorry guys, what about this then? Yes. <laughs> you know, uh, some of the ladies too, this is a drill, right? You use the drill to get the job done. Some guys, though, have probably never used this. It looks the same, similar. So we've got a drill and a glue gun. We want to use the right tool for the right results, the results that we want. And that's sort of what our toolbox is about. And, uh, and it, it's just about being able to realize that we have turnkey programs. We, we find that when people follow the step-by-step -step action plans that we have to the T, they get results. But we do have all little bits of nuances and everything and we don't like certain foods and we don't like the taste of this and we don't like, you don't like exercise? That's okay, we can still help you. You don't like um, shakes? That's okay. Our programs adapt to that. There's all, this is the thing, we have adaptability in our programs so that, because we believe that we are all alike and we are all different and so, to sort of demonstrate that process, we've got this fun little clip that's put together by kindergarten uh, kids. And I really want, um, it might be a bit loud in the beginning, but I really want you to get that if we teach our kids that we're all different, we're all alike, but we're all different, why is it that every single weight loss program out there tends to treat you as all the same? Why do we teach kids that we're all alike, but we're all different, and yet no one else thinks about that in terms of wellness? Let's roll we are all alike, we are all people. We're all different, we do not look the same. We have different color eyes. We have different color hair. Some of us have curly hair. Some of us have straight hair. Some of us have glasses. We have different shades of skin. Some of us have dark skin. Some of us have lighter skin. We are all kids. We're all like, we all have bodies. Some of us have blue eyes. Some of us have green eyes. Some of us have brown eyes. Some of us have curly hair. Some of us have straight hair. Some of us have long hair. Some of us have short hair. Some of us have freckles. Some of us have glasses. We're all like, we all have families. Some families have children. Some families have just grown-ups. Some people have a mom and dad. Some families have just dads. Some families have brothers and sisters. Some families have granddads. Some families have pets. Some people live in igloos. Some people live in a tree house. Some people live in a house. Some people live in motor homes. Some people live in a hotel. Some people live in houseboats. Some people live in brick houses. Some people live in skyscrapers. Some people live in a teepee. We are all alike, we all like food. Some people don't like tomatoes. Some people don't like apples. Some people don't like oranges. Some people don't like carrots. Some people don't like um, tomatoes. Some people like bananas. Some people like pasta. Some people like pizza. Some people like ice cream. Some people like eggs. Some people like apples. We all like eating. Some of us like to play ball. Some of us like swimming. Some of us like to play with shop games. Some of us like to jump in. We are all alike. We are all different. We are a family. So there you have it. We're all alike. And we are all different. And, you know, that's really what we aim to, to look at in terms of what we offer in terms of all of our programs and our toolbox, for example. Um, you know, there are different needs, wants and desires that we have. And so just understand that our programs take into account that we all 
do have similarities. There are some some real reasons why we've all str struggled with weight gain. But there, but then if you've ever been in a situation where you go, how come they eat the same things as me and they don't seem to put on fat? Well, we were all different. So sometimes, you know, even on the same program, you might be looking at the results that people around you are getting and you're disappointed. You may need to apply more tactics, more tools to get the job done, but you can still get the job done. That's the thing. We're all alike and we're all different. So that's why, you know, our, all of our step-by-step -step action plans and they're there to make it very simple, but the guidance and support is very important to tap into so that you have the experiences of the organization when you say, well, you know, this isn't working for me as I'd hoped, what else can I do? Okay, so that's really what that's about. And that's the same right across the board with our program. So since we're here talking about weight management though, it's really important for you to think about what's the real reason you want to lose weight. Because we talked about weight loss and wellness and improving your health and well-being and all that sort of thing. But the reality is, is there are some emotional reasons. It's not just about health. There's something else you want. Here are the top reasons that people say they want to lose weight. I want to feel fit and healthy. It's more about how they feel. I want to be confident in myself. I want to be respected. I want to be appreciated. I want to be loved. I want to wear clothes I love. I want to get a better job. Now, it's interesting, isn't it? We should, we can say, but a lot of those, it shouldn't matter. But if it does, we simply need to take action on that. So, you know, it, there's no use burying your head in the sand and say that it shouldn't matter. Let's get the job done. So if you want improved health and well-being, then we can definitely guide you there. Just to give you a bit of hope, take you away. If you've been despairing about your own wellness, your own sort of weight loss goals, then here are some results from the community. So these are just some of the, a glimpse of the, the impact that being savvy, as we like to put it, has had on some of these people. Simple changes, quick results, and long-term success with a lot of these people. Here's Here's Lolita with eight kilos lost and down from a size 12 to a size six. And that was essentially doing our detox and eat savvy program, which I'll tell you about in just a moment. These people, 20 kilos, 12 kilos down, doing essentially what we call our detox and rapid fat loss protocol. These people in, in just a month did not lose a significant weight, but dramatically improved their shape with our programs. The, the lady over there towards your right, getting rid of, in that time, that quick space of time, a condition that she had for 20 years that doctors couldn't solve. Gone in a month of doing detox and, um, you know, the detox program. So, you know, just remarkable changes. And this is what we mean by certainly you need to seek advice if you're already under, you know, under a professional for some sort of issue, but take self-responsibility. She took self-responsibility, worked with a doctor, health condition gone. Same thing with this particular lady, you know, 30 kilos gone in the space of months with our detox and rapid fat loss protocol and significant health improvements for her as well. Same with this particular lady, 34 kilos, most of her medications eliminated by working with her doctor. Um, her candida solved. Um, her, she had tried many of the significantly known weight loss protocols out there without results over her years and simply got used to being overweight for her whole life. And then lost 34 kilos, detoxed her system, got off most medications. Pretty amazing. And then the guys can do it too. So this particular gentleman, detox and rapid fat loss. And that's me on that side. Um, <laughs> and... And I'd, what, what was the impetus for me? I reached my heaviest. You know, you hop on the scales and you go, right, something's got to get done here. So I got out the toolbox and started operating. So, so that was, those pictures were taken 14 weeks apart. But, you know, it's not just weight loss. It's the underlying health and the changes in your life that can happen that we get these sorts of things. It's not as impactful as a before and after picture for us visually, but equally impactful if we read it. This is a, a particular uh, testimonial we received. Thank you for the savvy weight management systems. My health has improved and my joints have become more free moving and I'm sleeping better too. On talking with my wellness guide, we decided I needed some more time on the detox before focusing on shedding my weight. Corey advised me to use the Eat Savvy Diet as well and, to try, and not to try to lose weight, but just to practice eating better and aiming for the green 
in the Eat Savvy approach. I've lost 20 kilos just practicing. And now I can see where I put on weight and that I put on weight when I'm not savvy. I'm going for another 15 kilos so that I can go surfing again with my son. It's not about weight loss, it's about life improvement and being able to, that's what we mean when we say, you know, to reach a high level of well-being and live life to the full. He couldn't surf because he put on so much weight. And now his joints are better, he's sleeping better, he's lost the weight and he can go surfing with his son again. So that's what it's about sometimes. But we do have some problems going on in the world. Seven out of 10 um, men are obese or overweight. One in two women are obese or overweight. Uh, one in four children have got to the point of being overweight or obese. The statistics say that one in 20 eats enough fruit and vegetables of us as Aussies. One in five of us suffer from sort of flow on effects like hay fever and allergies because of our diet, etc. One in three of us gets enough exercise and one in 20 of us has diabetes. So we have some big problems here in Australia and they're not getting fixed without some change from us in the community. So shocking statistics illustrate Australia's obesity problem. Why are Australians gaining, more quick, gaining weight more quickly than anyone else? This one talked about mapping Australia's collective weight gain and saying that there is today we, um, becoming the, the, the most obese nation. Australia's becoming the most obese nation. This is all news articles. We know there's issues going on, but how come no changes are happening then? Okay, this one shocked me. Courier Mail article saying that city planners are struggling with the growing passenger sizes because not only is it putting, um, uh, you know, an Im having an impact on our infrastructure, they're even not talking about the buses, they're talking about the roads, the pressure on the roads because we're simply heavier. Australian diet, worse than originally thought, the CSIRO suggests. Re the re um, report warns that Australian diets are lacking in fruits and vegetables. Australia's diet, worse than the American. Obesity, Apologies. So this is a clip and from an Australian news report that I think really clearly <laughs> depicts what we're dealing with and what we as a community need to do about it. So let's roll that. New figures on obesity are in and they are not looking good. A report published today in the medical journal The Lancet charts worldwide obesity levels over the last three decades. To have a look at this news now, we're joined by Professor Rob Moody from the University of Melbourne School of Population and Global Health. Rob Moody, good morning. Good morning. We've known for years that the world, um, well, at least the parts of the Western world, are getting fatter. Yeah. What do these figures show us? Well, first of all, they're looking at this in 188 countries, and that has really hasn't been done before. First of all, it sort of shows us that obesity is now along, no longer just a, an issue of developed countries, of, of wealthier countries, but it's an issue of, of many, many developing countries. If you look uh, in the Caribbean, the Pacific, in the Middle East, they have major levels of obesity as high as ours. And, uh, and, and Australia and New Zealand combined, we're probably increasing our rate of obesity faster than, than in fact, any other region. So we're, we're unfortunately well in the competition. Really? So we are one of the, the fastest yeah, no, growing no. Yeah, groups, um, literally? Literally, yeah. Uh, and uh, combined, put New Zealand and Australia together. Um, you know, we, we really have major levels amongst our kids, let alone amongst our adults. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm a middle-aged man. 75, 80 percent of middle-aged men are overweight in Australia. Um, That's a staggering figure, isn't it? It is. I mean, it's you know, five million Australians obese. Um, I, I was head of the National Preventative Health Task Force five years ago. We did major report on tobacco, alcohol, and obesity. If you look at what's happened since then, then Australia's got a, an A plus for, for tobacco. No doubt about that. For obesity, you'd give it, you'd give us an E minus. It's an inter intergenerational problem as well, mm. uh, increasingly overweight or obese parents. Mm. Uh, their mm. kids will turn out to be overweight and obese as well. Yeah, it's fundamentally a cultural issue. I mean, in terms of, uh, it's now an Australian cultural issue. It's a global issue as well, but it's around what's the environment in which people actually live, work, play, eat mm. uh, and exercise. And unfortunately, our diet has changed pretty dramatically over 30 years. The composition of what we're eating has changed. The, the really high levels of sugar, and, uh, and fat in our, uh, <clears throat> you know, in, in our food. I mean, it's amazing if you just think someone has a soft drink, there's about nine teaspoons of sugar in it, right? You sit down, you have a, a soft drink, right? 
and you sat next to someone who had a cup of tea, then you'd watch them put nine teaspoons of sugar in their cup of tea. You'd think they were nuts. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You'd think they were addicted, apart from anything else. I mean, it, it is really amazing what has sort of gone, what's changed in our diet without us really taking account of it. That's a good observation because the incremental nature of yeah. it is interesting. Yeah. Just the fact that everyone now feels they have to have a drink when they eat. Yeah. And very yeah. few people just have a glass of the water. water. Yeah. Yeah. They will have then some kind of juice or soft drink which contains a phenomenal amount of sugar. Just, just one of those, as you say, or, will do your entire daily energy requirements. Or, or even, even for people who are exercising, you have to have an energy drink. Well, no, you don't. They're Not one that's mm. absolutely chocker with, with sugar, which has actually got no added nutritional uh, value. I mean, we recently have just, just re uh, re um, released other uh, work on the National Health Survey showing that 35% of our energy intake in Australia is from what they call non-discretionary food. In other words, food or drink that doesn't have any added nutritional value. Right. So we're basically over-consuming. We don't need to have all that, but we take it on. The, the implications for people's health and longevity yeah. is, of course, clear. Yeah. What about the implications for the cost of our health system, which we know is, is, is already one that can't be sustained? Huge. I mean, if you look at the issue around, you know, the government trying to manage the cost of the healthcare system and using a you know, co-payment um, in general practice, well, what about starting to prevent some of these things in the first place? I mean, obesity you know, will result in a major increase in diabetes in cardiovascular risk, in osteoarthritis, even in cancers. Um, and yet we know we can do something about it. Other countries do, can do much better and are doing much better. We're sort of sitting here watching Where it. Where are public health authorities slipping down then? What, what, what more needs to be done? Well, I mean, certainly we need to be reformulating food. We need to be labelling our food much better. Industry and the junk food industry and junk drink industries really need to start playing ball. Government actually probably needs to step in and regulate. We give saturation advertising to our children um, you know, of unhealthy food. That really needs to be quite restricted. The kings of Australian sport are major ambassadors of junk food and junk drinks. Yep. Mm. That's what our kids learn. Mm. You look up to these wonderful sportsmen and they're chomping away on, uh, uh, on junk food. But in a free society, how, how really and realistically do you regulate the food industry and the fast food industry in particular? How do you do that? Well, I mean, you look at the example of uh, Mayor Bloomberg in, in New York, I mean, where you take them on. Uh, and eventually the, uh, we'd hope that the community opinion, because parents actually want something done about this. Pa the, it's a landslide of parents that actually wants something to be done. But did he end up winning that fight? Oh, about... just on one, the one on supersize he didn't, but he yes. won a lot of other fights around. That's uh... right, because he wanted to, he wanted to <coughs> sure. uh, reduce that supersized drink so you yeah. couldn't buy that much sugary and uh, soft drink. And yeah. kilojoule content in fast food restaurants, yeah. he was very successful on yeah. that Yeah, and the trans fats. I mean, they've yeah. also, you know, and in, what they've done also is put in very you know, much healthier food into public institutions where, you know, it's their role, you know, whether it's hospitals or schools. It's a, you know, you can have a gradual shift. What we'd like in the long run is for the, uh, for the food industry to make lots of money out of healthy food. Do you think the government's got its eye on this properly? No, no. I mean, I think it's, it, it will be up to communities to, to help change this. Um, it'll be up to uh, um, a whole lot of groups who are actually interested in, in health um, and, and improving also our productivity. Maybe even workplaces because, you know, it's in the interests of workplaces to have um, fitter and healthier mm. workers. They're more productive. Rob Moody, good to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much. So as um, Professor Moody says there, it's up to us as a community, it's up to, uh, up to organisations to make the changes and that's really what we're about in the Savvy Team. This whole, you know, we, our goal is to be one of the most preeminent movements in terms of health and wellness improvement around Australia and the world. So that is just an example. The interesting thing, when you put all of that together, it's actually, I believe, partially not your fault that you've got unhealthy and overweight. Because, but it is your responsibility to make those changes. So as you heard there from, from what's going on in the, in the public arena and that, that um, you know, the government hasn't taken responsibility and yet is, you know, I guess, paying the price on the public health system and therefore we're all paying the price, either physically or financially, it's not your fault that, and I'll tell you why I, I can say that it's not all your fault, but it is your responsibility. Number one, you're not being told about the effect of what we call endocrine disrupting chemicals, what effect they're having on your body, you're not being told from medical authorities, from the doctor, through the news reports and everything, because it's, they just know that if they told you, it would destroy the economy. 
So I'm telling you that it would destroy the general economy because the use of, in, of these endocrine disrupting chemicals is ubiquitous right throughout industry and personal care products and that sort of thing. So you're not being told about that. The packaged fast food industry and mass media marketing around that, you're being drawn into as Professor Moody depicted. So right from sports, we're actually promoting that sports people use all of these special drinks and all that sort of thing and, and junk drinks. Do you know that for most men, you know, we, here we are, we market weight management programs and nutrition, but for most men, if they simply stopped drinking calories, would reach a normal weight, even with, that, even with the foods not changing. And what does that mean? Drinks, beer, anything else, spirits. If you stop drinking calories, your weight would, would often normalize. There's a free tidbit. So. But, if you want, but obviously, if you want to keep drinking your wine or your beer or whatever, there's some other tactics that we need to undertake. So, <laughs> but one of the things that would, and I'll, tell, I'll talk about this in just a moment, but also there's a whole bunch of diet misinformation and poor advice, in my opinion, from health authorities. So let's deal with this poor advice from health authorities. For example, we're supposed to eat less and exercise more. We're, What's a major TV show that um, actually basically made people do that? Uh, Biggest Loser? <laughs> they showed, they've done research with that, and most contestants are fatter than they ever were after the show. Because they missed a whole bunch of the underlying issues. Their full-time job was to exercise more and eat less. And when they went back to normal life, they were not trained in the underlying issues and exercise and eating, although that's a tactic, it's not the only answer. Eat less fat, eat more complex carbs. Well, that was one of the worst, in my opinion, the worst pieces of advice that you ever received. And so now they've been studying, for example, the Mediterranean diet for 50 years. And they say that, you know, you're more likely, instead of following that advice, you're 50% more likely to lose weight just on a Mediterranean style diet than you are following that advice. And that's basically because in a Mediterranean diet, you eat more fat and eat less carbs. So, um, and that's been medically proven. But in our opinion, that's 50 years old now. Let's get with the program and start being savvy and looking at what the forefront of the research is all about. And then of course, we're told that we should eat more often and we'll lose weight. So we simply put more fuel in our body so that we never have to burn our fat stores and that helps us to stoke our metabolism and um, lose weight. It doesn't even make biological sense and yet we buy it because of the marketing that's out there. So we've been giving bogus advice and it's not just me saying it's a whole bunch of doctors. So let's listen to this particular clip from a great movie called Fathead. It's a documentary movie called Fathead. Now, the guy who put it together just really put together an amazing amount of research, but it's a bit kitschy. It's not, we're not talking about Steven Spielberg production here, but let's roll it. If you could pack all of human history into one year, we've only been farming and eating grain since about yesterday, which is when we became shorter and fatter. We only started consuming processed vegetable oils about 10 minutes ago, which is when heart disease became our number one killer. So after examining all this human history, the experts came to the obvious conclusion. We need to eat a lot more of these. And so they convinced us that human health depends on foods we didn't eat for more than 99% of our entire existence. How did this happen? In the 1950s, a biochemist named Ansel Keys published a study that compared heart disease and fat consumption in a half dozen countries. The more fat, the more heart disease. The trend line was unmistakable. Just one little problem. Keys left out countries where people eat a lot of fat but have very little heart disease, like Holland and Norway. He also left out countries where people don't eat much fat but do have a lot of heart disease, like Chile. 
In fact, Keyes had reliable data from 22 countries, and the results were all over the place. But you can't make a big splash in the scientific community with a trend line that looks like this. So Keyes did what any dedicated researcher would do. He threw out the data that didn't fit and published his results. His punishment for this bit of scientific chicanery was to get his picture on the cover of Time magazine. Keyes became known as the father of the lipid hypothesis, which says that eating saturated fat raises the cholesterol in your blood, and high cholesterol in your blood clogs your arteries and causes heart disease. The hypothesis that when you eat high fat, that then that produces high cholesterol and the cholesterol produces heart disease is wrong in every one of those links. This whole idea that dietary fat causes cholesterol problems is sort of a myth. The whole idea that uh, cholesterol problems lead to heart disease is a myth. The theory is completely and totally wrong. It was a, a theory that was made out of whole cloth and then pushed. The, the term artery clogging saturated fat, it's as though it's all one word. It's become part of the, the zeitgeist. Everybody knows saturated fat is bad for you, but when you get back and you start looking at the medical literature and you root back through to find out where this whole idea came from, it's bogus. So that's, that's the opinion, bogus. It's actually bogus. In defense of Ansel Keys, it was the lipid hypothesis. For So if you're watching online or you guys have any background in science, you put forward a hypothesis. That's the scientific process. And then it needs to be proven or disproven. Well, it was never proven or disproven, but somehow it managed to become right throughout the world. It was only ever a hypothesis that basically all of these doctors are saying was never correct um, and yet made it to mainstream. And we're still operating on that today. So that's when we say diet misinformation authorities. And if you didn't understand that, perfectly normal, but it is your responsibility to make some changes. The packaged food industry and mass media marketing, you heard about that, how many aisles in the supermarket are actually filled with these types of foods that don't provide any nutritional value? And that's why we jokingly sometimes sort of say, when you go to the supermarket, just skirt around the edges and then get out. Because all the stuff in the middle is all of this. So, you know, and then if you're not into the salty aisle, maybe you're into the, the sweets aisle here. So, the, the most disturbing thing is, this was an article that was put forward by a, a blogger saying, why don't we tell diabetics the truth? And they highlighted, as a nutritionist, that went against her normal training as a nutritionist and, and started recommending the type of diet that we recommend in the Eat Savvy approach, she was basically blatantly saying, why don't we tell diabetics the truth? And she highlighted the Diabetic Living magazine full of sugary dessert treats when the number one thing that you need to eliminate is sugar, if you're a diabetic. How can that be? See what we mean when I say, it's not your fault, we've got all this mass meter advertising. These, are, these magazine editors, and when you think about ads on TV and everything, these are people that have been trained in psychological persuasion. So they know what they're doing. We don't have people trained in psychological persuasion stopping you from eating the things but we have people trained in psychological persuasion making you go and get them. So this is the, this is the issue. And so just to back that up, we have another clip that talks about this with a whole bunch of experts talking about sugar's toxic uh, effect. Rarely a week goes by that you don't hear about the world's obesity crisis. Obesity is the number of overweight or obese eating habits. Half of all Australian children will be obese. We're often blamed for eating too much and not exercising enough. But some of the world's top experts refute this stereotype. Did all of a sudden the entire world just become a bunch of gluttons and sloths? All at the same time? I mean, get real. In only a few decades, there are now more obese people on the planet than undernourished. When you have this kind of dramatic increase in obesity and diabetes rates, something in the environment is causing it. Experts are pointing to a new dietary villain that's making us fat and sick. The obvious suspect at the moment is sugar. Sugar is driving all of the chronic metabolic diseases that we know about today. There is a myopic focus on reducing fat consumption. 
at the expense of not considering what the sugar component is. Why is sugar so toxic to our health? This is the bitter truth behind our sweet obsession with sugar. In the 70s, when obesity and heart disease were on the rise, we were told that dietary fat was the villain. Memorable ads like this one use persuasive imagery to convince us that low-fat muesli bars could make you skinny. Kellogg's new low-fat granola bars, loaded with taste, but only half the fat. Advertisers choreographed TV ads like this with catchy jingles and repetitive phrases to drive the message home. 40% less fat. McCain oven chips, better for taste, better for you. And then there was a hypothesis going around at the time that if a food didn't have fat in it, it couldn't make you fat. This sparked the low-fat revolution. A vast range of low-fat products began to dominate supermarket shelves. The only problem was when you took the fat out of food, it tasted like cardboard, so they had to replace it with something, and that was sugar. It gradually became the essential additive. So now you have a product that's lower fat, lower saturated fat, and it's got a lot more sugar than it ever had. Whole fat mayo, for example, has just over 2% sugar. The low fat version has six times more. My pet hate in terms of low fat food is low fat yogurt that's high in sugar. You might as well eat candy if you're going to do that because the sugar level in some of these low fat yogurts is, is really quite high. Adding sugar is how the food industry engineers temptation. Now the food tastes great. In fact, it tastes so great we can't put it down. This is a win win for the food industry. They complied with the arguments of the 1980s, they've gotten us to eat more, and they are making money hand over fist. The problem is, they're doing it at our expense and we're losing our health. By the mid-90s, the demonization of fats meant that sugar was actually considered a healthy alternative. Ads like this promoted sugary drinks as part of a healthy lifestyle. The American Heart Association recommended that fatty snacks be replaced with high sugar products like juice, hard candy and spreads like syrup and honey. Probably the first time in human history that health organizations were advocating we eat sugar as a, as a means of being healthier. But now that 60% of the population is overweight or obese, and diabetes rates have tripled. Is it possible that we've been given the wrong advice? Get off the fats. Get it off. These numbers are astounding. Throughout this entire period, with this, this coincides completely with this argument that we should eat a low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet during which sugar consumption increased steadily. It's hard to argue that we were given the right advice. Even today, our peak health authorities, like the National Heart Foundation, endorse cereals that, well, might be low in fat, but they're up to 30% sugar. This is a bitter pill to swallow for obesity researcher Professor Michael Cowley. It's a bit surprising that cereals like Honey Cheerios or the Milo cereal contains an endorsement from groups that are supposed to be looking after our metabolic health. So the Heart Foundation has got it wrong on this occasion? I don't understand how they've said that's a healthy food. Australia's National Heart Foundation declined to comment on camera, but in a written statement said their tick is simply to help consumers identify healthier options. Australian data on sugar consumption is unreliable, but in the States they've seen a significant increase in the last several decades. The chances are you're eating more refined sugar and starch than you realise. It's not just in the obvious things like soft drinks, syrup and candy. One half of the sugar that we are consuming today is in items that we didn't even know had sugar. Tomato sauce, barbecue sauce, hamburger buns, hamburger meat, all sorts of processed foods. 
if you look at virtually every item in the store that has a food label, it has some form of sugar. This is a vastly different diet to what we evolved to eat. Human evolution till about three or 4,000 years ago had a very different diet to what's happened since the agricultural revolution, where there's been a much greater input of grains and so increase in carbohydrate consumption. It's this increase in dietary carbohydrate that's messing with our metabolism. If you constantly provide carbohydrates to the body, you'll have constantly high insulin levels and that will lead to increased fat deposition in tissues. The higher your insulin, the more likely you are to store fat because insulin is the main hormone that puts fat into fat cells. So that's what we mean when we say you're not being told of all of these different issues and we've got all this mass media marketing, but they highlighted one of the things in there where they said the obvious suspect, you watched crime shows before? The obvious suspect is sugar. Well, we do believe that it's a, it's a primary suspect, but they're not even telling you about one of the most obvious suspects and that's the endocrine disrupting chemicals. So it's like one of those things, we don't want to convict sugar fully when we've got all sorts of other things going on that we're not being told about. So you probably weren't told that a study found that it was easier for you to be skinny in the 1980s than it is today. And that's not because of the Jane Fonda workout. <laughs> um, so <laughs> the Journal of Obesity Research and Clinical Practice found that people today who eat and exercise exactly the same amount as people 20 years ago, are still fatter. That it's harder for adults today to maintain the same weight as those 20 to 30 years ago did, even at the same levels of food intake and exercise. So it's starting to get a bit like, whoa, how can that be? People today are about 10% heavier than people were in the 1980s, even if they followed the exact same diet and exercise plans. So if we start looking at more of the evidence, we're starting to see that this might have been a team effort. The obvious suspect isn't just sugar, there's some other stuff going on here. Why? The researchers found these three things. People are exposed to more chemicals that can be weight gain inducing. They even named them, these are the endocrine disrupting chemicals, they even named them obesogens. Some of the chemicals can directly trigger obesity. The use of prescription drugs has risen dramatically since the 1970s and 80s. And the study authors think that the microbiomes, the gut bacterial colonies, and, and the health of the gut bacterial colonies has somehow changed between the 1980s and now. It's well known that some types of gut bacteria can make a person more prone to weight, prone to weight gain and obesity. Did you know in terms of that, they've actually taken, um, they've done studies on mice where they've taken a fecal transplant, yes, that back to that, they've taken uh, a poop transplant out of a skinny mouse, injected it into the, the colon of a, an obese mouse, and the obese mouse lost weight and became a skinny mouse. You kidding me? The gut bugs fixed the, the, the gut bugs. So you, you, the chances are it's not your fault, it's those damn gut bugs. They're fat gut bugs. And we had to kick them out and put in some good ones, some skinny bugs. So. But in terms of this endocrine disrupting chemical issue, this is why one of our fat loss maximizers is the concept of live clean. In the toolbox here, by the way, with all of this, I won't be going through it in depth. We have a free online class that deals with the fat loss maximizer toolbox. But let me just introduce you to this concept. This is from the World Health Organization. They, they, there's no question from the World Health Organization that endocrine disruption, uh, uh, what they used to think is it just messed up with your, messed your sex hormones or interrupted wildlife. It wasn't of harming you. They since in 2012 came up with this report that there is no question endocrine disruption is no longer limited to estrogenic, androgenic and thyroid pathways, which they thought before. Chemicals can also interfere with metabolism, fat storage, bone development, the immune system, which suggests that all systems in your body can and will be affected by EDCs. Sources of EDCs, food, furniture, new furniture outgassing, outgassing from home electricals. Hello, we get more and more electricals we're using. Chemicals in water, pesticides, environmental pollution, cosmetics and personal care and cleaning products. And these are primary sources because they're direct exposure to the skin. 
Yes, everything else is sort of we're breathing in the environment, we're breathing it in. But every day we're putting things directly onto the skin and it's going into the bloodstream. So these are the primary areas where we look to help you turn off the tox toxic tap, sh shall we say. The, the World Health Organization found that these chemicals can interfere with all of these different issues. It can create cardiovascular disease, learning problems, infertility, breast cancer, altered puberty, fibroids, prostate cancer, Parkinson's. But what's interesting, right in the middle there, they found that the chemicals can directly trigger obesity. So can you get when I say it's sort of not your fault, but it is your responsibility and you're not being told about all of this? It's all there. This is the World Health Organization reported this to the authorities. That was, by the way, a report for decision makers. Well, here's the thing. The report went to government organizations and members of the community and organizations like that because they're the decision makers. Well, I'm sorry, we are the decision makers for our own health as well. So let's start making that decision and, uh, and moving forward you know, to reach that higher level of health. What's the difference here? Let me just demonstrate what we mean by this um, triggering weight gain. These are genetically identical mice. The one over towards your right was exposed to endocrine disrupting chemicals in the laboratory. This mouse had no exposure. So can you afford to ignore what you're being exposed to when it directly triggered in studies weight gain? What about this? The damage to your DNA, and if you look at some of the most recent research in anti-aging, the telomeres and the, one of the Nobel Prize winners um, recently came up with the concept of the telomere effect. Well, they've been doing this research for close to 30 years where they started to discover it, and we're only now seeing it come out to the public. 30 years before we're told about it. So all we do is we're all, in the savvy team, we're sniffing out this stuff so that we can see what it can, what it can do for us now rather than having to wait for 30 years for the books to come out and everyone to tell us about it. So um, here, these particular mice, so the genetically identical mice, their mothers were exposed to endocrine disrupting chemicals. This mother received a normal diet with no supplementation, a normal diet for a mouse, and they both got exposed. Whereas the mother of this mouse received supplemental nutrition as well. So what they found was that the nutrition counteracted the genetic damage to the, to the mice's mother so that the mother didn't pass on the genetic damage. So can you really afford to ignore supplements when you, you know, don't even know what you've been exposed to? And I often, you know, in my family, there's a bit of a joke. Dad says, you know, I've got a finger here that was broken. I've got all, you know, these different, well, it wasn't broken, but that's how I was born. And um, whenever, as a kid, the joke was, yeah, but you're an Agent Orange child. <laughs> And it was like a joke because he knew he was exposed. He went to Vietnam, he was exposed to what they knew were, was harmful. And he joked about that, really not, there was no evidence. No one had told him that he could pass on any damage to his children because he came back, conceived me, went on with life, you know, whatever. But no one told him that, but he's like been joking about that for years. He was tapping into some truth. They now have proven that you do pass on damage. So anything that you can do, if you know people that are looking to fall pregnant, have kids, you know, do whatever, anything you can do to clean yourself up beforehand is such, such an important thing. But right now, you can also take action. Just like me, you know, you go, all right, well, we've all been damaged. We can't blame our parents. We've got to act with what we've got now and move forward. And for those of you too, by the way, I guess what came up to me there is, for those of you who are parents, you were doing the best that you knew because you weren't told about all of this from medical authorities or anything like that. So you did, don't look back and blame yourself or anything because you did the best that you knew how. But now we have to make some changes as we, you know, we've really shown you that this makes a difference. So that whole issue of nutrition leads us to the next one, the optimized nutrition um, maximizer. And so here's a whole bunch of research saying, um, for example, here, particularly increased available of inexpensive, energy-dense, low-nutrition foods are considered major contributing components associated with the rise in obesity. One study saying that it's 
not just the foods being full of sugar, but they're low in micronutrients. Okay, here we conclude that obese adults compared to normal weight adults have a lower micronutrient intake and a higher um, per per higher prevalence of micronutrient inadequacy. Direct from the reports saying, we've seen that those who are overweight or obese simply aren't getting the right nutrition. Simply not getting the right nutrition. The Journal of International Journal of Obesity. All right, if we're thinking about studying obesity, the International Journal of Obesity found that consumers of dietary vitamin mineral supplements after proper adjustments for all co co the confounding factors were leaner and had lower body fat than those non-consumers. So I get pretty sick of hearing people say, all you need is a balanced diet when the research doesn't back it up. It doesn't back it up. It says that we would be wise to supplement even if we're having a perfect diet. So at least getting some basics. So we're talking about weight, weight gain, weight management, obesity. These seven trace minerals have all been linked to obesity in some way. Cravings or you know, lack of ability to deal with sugars and all that sort of thing. So a lack of those creates poor ability to manage your weight. Well, wouldn't it be good if we made sure we got all of those? So now you go, look, and you're shaking all the bottles of chromium and magnesium and everything. Well, we simply recommend a, a mineral drink that you take daily to make sure you're getting those things. So done, job done. I don't have to worry about it. I'm not deficient. And you can still move on and optimize the rest of your life and you know nutrient profile. There's actually 90 or more nutrients that our body needs. You know, 60 of them are minerals. So um, earlier it was like, don't don't concern linda mentioned don't get concerned about you need 90 bottles of pills but you know you don't need that much to get all of the 90 nutrients that your body needs but and then people say well you know why do, do i need that well do we need insurance of any form no only when we need it but we pay for it hoping that we'll never need it this the thing with nutrition is it's like an insurance policy but in the meantime it actually makes you feel better <laughs> so it's having a, a a beneficial effect two ways so that's what our 90 nutrient program is about so ultimately though to restore and maintain your health and your weight over the long term we simply need to reduce well one of the two of the things we need to do reduce toxins and increase nutrition and so that's really all of this we talk about all of that in a fat loss maximizer toolbox so you don't need to you know, worry about picking it up, you can, you can go and get that for free. So there are four common barriers when we're starting to go, okay, that's some of the underlying stuff. I want to now do something to shed the weight. There are four common barriers for sustained weight loss and sustained weight management. Number one, accessing the fat stores, being able to burn the stored fat for energy. And this is one of the things Professor Cowley, I think it said, he said on there, if you have constantly high um, insulin levels, you can't ever burn the fat. And so that's one of the things that we have to do with our programs, be able to reduce your insulin. Cravings and snacking. You need tips and product solutions to help you to reduce the cravings. Minerals, trace minerals are one of those things. That's why we recommend a daily trace mineral drink. But there are some other things as well that that optimize things like cinnamon and chromium and zinc and all that sort of thing to help you to turn off those cravings. You need program flexibility, something where it adapts with your lifestyle and you know we're all different, we're all the same but we're all different. It has to be able to adapt to you so that you stick with it. And if there are some issues for you where you really have a problem in this area, we can then introduce certain tools, tactics, certain products to help you offset the damage, shall we say because it's, it's more important for you to stay with something long-term than to think that I'm on or off it, on, and on or off it. Then you need the guidance and support, ongoing guidance and a community support so that you're never alone. That's what we offer in the Savvy Team. So I hope you found that information really valuable and helpful to understand how things have gone awry, how you, you may have ended up, you know, not being able to maintain a healthy weight. So what I'd like to do now is give you a brief overview 
of some of our weight loss programs. So just to give you an overview about the way they all work and and I won't be going into depth about how they all work because we have master classes and, and information on each of them, but to give you an overview so that you sort of might know which one might suit you the most based on your, your circumstances. So remember back in that particular session where we talked about we are all alike and yet we are all different and and had that you know that playful clip from all the kindergarten kids that you know and if we teach kindergarten children that that we're all alike we're all humans and we're all people and everything but we all have unique differences based on our genetics and based on our preferences as well that's again why we don't just have one program like everyone else out there we have flexibility because you know, because it allows you to get your goals, to hit your goals, without sort of having to worry about you know looking left and right and thinking about how come I'm not getting the same results as so and so, how come I'm not doing this. It allows you to you know to bring in other tools to help you to to you know to really get the job done. So let's take a look at the programs. So first of all, if we if we look at the the four essential programs that we have at the at the center of it all at the core is our eat savvy approach and this is basically a a low toxin high nutrition way of eating you know so that you're looking for the foods that are least inflammatory and most nutritious and most likely to help you to reach your goal so that's sort of it can be a standalone program or the basis of all of our programs and it's like a sliding scale to help you to find the most nutritious and least um, damaging foods, you know, the things that will really help you, the foods that will really help you to reach that high level of wellness. And so first of all, we have our Savvy Detox, and I'll go through each of the programs, uh, give you a little bit of information about each of them soon. We have our Rapid Fat Loss Program, and these are often used together. These are often sort of done together, like some people may do a detox for 30 days and then roll on into the Rapid Fat Loss Program. But also many of the same product suggestions that we use actually, you know, help to optimize the detox pathways whilst people are on the rapid fat loss protocol. So, so they're often used in conjunction there. And we have our body transformation challenge and our fat loss maximizer toolbox. Now the toolbox isn't necessarily a program in and of itself, but it certainly it can be used. Many of the, the collection of tools and tips can be used actually as a program. So what's the detox about? Well, this helps to address the underlying issues that can lead to problems with weight. And uh, we have a whole masterclass on that. So it's really about increasing your vitality. And we see many of our detoxes actually lose weight as a byproduct of improving their health, you know, by dealing with some of the underlying issues that the body's struggling with. It's great to prepare for best success with other programs and many detoxes have experienced anywhere from a, a 1 to 20 kilo weight loss in just uh, such a short period of time. Sometimes just the 30 days of doing the detox, sometimes a couple of months. So uh, incredible there considering it's not a diet. Following a little bit of a change of food choices and use, using nutrition to really open up and optimize the detox pathways. Then we have our rapid fat loss protocol and it incorporates a tightly restricted eating plan where your portions are measured and or maybe even count calories if need be to get the results. You know, so these are strictly counted to help you lose significant weight and regain your health in the quickest possible time. Now, rather than being a long term program that you just go on and on until you, you know, wreck your metabolism like many other programs, this is actually a, actually a cyclical program, a short term program that's repeated in cycles until your goal is achieved. Uh, but if you're, you're looking for a program to help you lose fat in the fastest possible way, you know, maybe you have a goal or whatever, uh, a certain time frame, then this is definitely the program for you. But of course, it's the strictest because it's the fastest. Then we have our body transformation challenge. And this is about helping active people improve their body composition and overall shape. So it's, it's more about body recomposition and it incorporates the eat savvy uh, approach, maybe even moving towards a clean keto inspired eating pattern. So a ketogenic type of lifestyle. This has some targeted exercise suggestions 
and supplements that are targeted at body recomposition, all around wellness, energy and vitality. So it's really focused more on helping you to not only lose fat, but also build muscle and, and look, you know, look all around better. Then we have our fat loss maximizer toolbox. Now, uh, this can be used as a standalone program, but in reality, it's a collection or toolbox of tips and tricks to help you to, to attain your weight loss and wellness goals faster. So they can all be used collectively to, to sort of form a program, but they're most often used as lifestyle modifications and sort of like add-ons for the other programs that we have to help you you know, to help you maximize your results, do it quicker, and maybe even to overcome weight loss plateaus. So I hope that gives you a good overview of what the programs are about. And the best thing is to talk with your wellness guide about, you know, which program is best for your needs. So just to, to bring it in for landing, some more results from the community here. So you get a glimpse of the sort of results that people can achieve. So not a bad loss, you know, five kilos in a week, um, people are seeing significant midsection change. Uh, so here, another great example. Um, quite, you see quite significant changes, both men and women. You're seeing different age brackets as well. Uh, so this guy did a great job. Um, over 30 kilos lost. Um, three weeks results. You're just seeing a lot of midsection uh, changes, and a lot of the a lot of the program is designed to target that. But then again that program is designed for those who have already had some challenges with some certain sticking points in terms of diet uh, and so we can certainly tweak it even more to overcome your issues so this is a fascinating thing one of the products in this particular um, in this particular uh, regime is a, a a lipolytic and thermogenic formula so what that means is it boosts your metabolism and helps you access fat for energy and it directly has been shown to trigger midsection burning of fat. What's interesting is this girl said, oh my God, zero kilos lost, but look at my waist in two weeks. And so obviously it, didn't, it just doesn't disappear. Why would her weight not change? Chances are through changing her diet, she probably started eating more protein. Her muscles became, um, you know, became a little bit firmer. So she probably gained muscle mass, lost fat. So there's been a body recomposition and shape change. That's what we want. That's what we want. Plus, if she started drinking water and was dehydrated over here, then that can also trigger your muscles to be a top, you know, to weigh more, shall we say. Again, significant changes here. This particular gentleman here off all blood pressure medication uh, as well, just as a result of losing fat. So all in all, this particular program is like, how do we put it all together? Just realize that if you go, oh my God, it's choices. Choices are good, but we can help you make the choice. So that's why, you know, if you fill out one about how can we help forms, we can then look at what you're looking to achieve and simply point you in the right direction. Now, certainly great place to start is just to start practicing on the Eat Savvy approach. You might lose a few kilos right there and then. Do a detox. You might speed up the fat loss. You want to take things to the next level, accelerate again and go to the, um, to the rapid fat loss. So it's not necessarily multiple choice. We can, we can help you put together something that deals with your needs, wants and desires. You want to go slow, we have a program. You want to go fast, we have a program. Don't like shakes or exercise, we have a program. Like shakes and exercise, we have a program. So. <laughs> You know, and we have our whole toolbox here to, to really accentuate things for you. So we, I decided when I got to my, when I, this is Linda, by the way. So Linda Please. lost, this is the, this is, you've now seen, you know, what she's like on the inside. So, um, but she had a 4.3% um, change there. So basically a fat, body fat decrease of 4.3% with a verified 4.6 kilo loss. Um, between when we had these body composition DEXA scans done um, and you know before and after. The main thing I wanted to point out to you was a lot of people say, oh, on these diets, you just lose, your metabolism goes down and you lose muscle. Verified, medically verified lean muscle um, maintenance with no exercise apart from walking. So medically verified success in fat loss, lean muscle maintenance without exercise. So that is, that is particularly important. 
so then there's me here. I had between the scans, I had a body fat decrease of 9.6% and a verified 10.5% uh, loss. And this is this is an example of where it came from. So blue trunk, arms, leg. So before and after, you can see that I lost it from all over, but predominantly the trunk area, the midsection, which is what we want to lose for the best effect in terms of improvement in our health. So there's the before and after um, actual scan results. You can see there was you know, evenly distributed fat, but a lot around the middle. So I went from 27.5% fat down to 17.9, and I'm now at 16.9. So uh, a significant change, and that's that was just 14 weeks. That was not even the the last um, the last photo. So it's really about putting it all together. I put a few things together, and um, and mostly used a bunch of things from the fat loss toolbox. So I pretty much focused on eat savvy, and I focused on a whole bunch of things from our toolbox. So um, are you ready to go? Uh, just tell your wellness guide that you want to get started, what, you, what you're wanting to achieve, do a how can we help form, and then we'll, we'll you know, guide you through the process and get you on the right track. Now, one of the things is it's great to do in a group. So, you know, it's that time of year, let's get started, see whether you'd like to do it with other people that you know. Uh, so who do you know who'd like to join in? Because it does make it fun and helps to keep you on track. Now. Some of you, of course, then go, okay, what's it going to cost me? Well, just to give you some comparisons here, some people started on similar programs through practitioners and paid $1,800 to $2,500 through a doctor for something similar to our rapid fat loss program for just the support and uh, et cetera. Some people have paid $495 for just the support and coaching. So they've all purchased products at retail prices and received little ongoing education and support to help them fine tune their, pro their program. Some of them paid simply $90 per half hour to go to naturopaths and be educated on the program. And they pretty much most of them bought detox type products, nutritional products, thermogenic products, cosmetics, cleaning, etc. all at the normal retail price. So we offer totally free support when you partner with us and, and simply you know, use the, the brands that we recommend. Totally free support. Now, um, you know, have you used things that are free before? Anyone Googled something? Free, but it still functions and they monetize their service other ways, don't they? On Facebook. How much did you get charged for access to Facebook today? Nothing? Right. That's the same sort of thing. We have a goal that if we can provide the information at no cost, like Google and all that sort of thing, then we can make bigger changes to the community. And so that's really why we do that. And we just ask, help us spread the word. I love this particular um, concept from little Trevor McKinney in the movie Pay It Forward. Sad movie, but great message. He said that in his social sciences exper um, project, he came to the class and said, I call this pay it forward and said, if, if I help three people with a needed favor and as part of that, they passed it on to three more and they passed on to three more, he said, we can change the world. And that's what we believe too. There are people that are needing weight loss and wellness favors right now. And so we're on a mission. So help us spread the word. So first thing you could start with the Eat Savvy Diet, um, has a whole bunch of benefits here. It's simply a matter of asking yourself, is it savvy? Um, you know, is it low in toxins, um, high in nutrition? You can download that for free. Some of the things will be obvious. Obviously there are not savvy ways of eating and foods. And then there are things that are obvious, salads versus hamburgers and what, but some of the things are not so obvious. So ultimately what it's about is avoiding these foods and eating savvy foods. That's why it's eat savvy. And if you remember that testimony I'll share with you before, he said, I just practiced eating in the green and I lost 20 kilos. So that's what we mean by that. It's just food choices. And some of them may confuse you because they're not what the nutritionists say. But you're decreasing, it's about decreasing toxins and inflammatory foods and increasing nutrition. But the great thing about it being a sliding scale is you're not on or off it. You were just not so savvy today and today you're savvy and you'll start to notice the difference in how you feel. So you can just sort of see it's just a food choice. This is based on 
uh, lots of different research and lots of different books read. So if you want to know where some of this has come from, we have all of that. And we're working on making, you know, we've had this available, but we're working on making it more user friendly in terms of having backup information, etc., uh, for you. So just reminding you of that particular um, testimony where he just said he practiced eating in the green. Um, one of the great things to see how you go with a 30 day challenge. Uh, also particularly good to do it with a detox, do it with our detox collection. So if you want more information, visit our Healthy Wealthy Wise blog. Um, you can also message us on the Facebook page and request uh, access to our Healthy Wealthy Wise private Facebook group. We have a whole bunch of um, you know, information available in our online membership community, as well as our Facebook groups. Uh, we have free training available online and via webinar. Our wellness support information is second to none, in our opinion. And we also offer state-of-the-art wellness analysis, where we can do a, especially for those of you local, not so easy for the people um, at a distance, unless you're in Australia, we can do uh, take a hair sample and the, um, this we're able to, you, through our bioinfluence analysis, actually send a digitized um, biomap really of what your hair shows and find out what sort of toxins you're, you're are damaging you, what sort of nutrition you're lacking in. So it can really help you to, to fine tune your program. So if you want improved um, health and well-being plus that weight loss, then we can guide you there. So I'll leave you with this particular thought. Uh, we're going to continue here in this group, but if you're joining us uh, online, we're going to leave you with this thought and I'll talk to some of these guys about some, some more specifics. Uh, but I think I need the Savvy Team's diet and detox plan because I could be unstoppable if I could just get started. So if you want to know more information uh, and you're joining us online, just message us and uh, we can certainly get you started. So thanks for being with us and we're encouraging you to be savvy. So, so I really hope you found that session valuable and look, if you're looking for a program to help you, you know, really get into the best shape of your life in 2020, then we can certainly help. So tap in with our community. I'm sure you'll be glad you did. Whatever your wellness goals are, let's work out a plan and let's make this your year. So let's jump on into the Wealthy and Wise segment and we're going to kick things off with three surprisingly simple principles for success and then go on into the choice we all have but very few apply. We're now moving on into wealthy and we are dealing with three surprisingly simple principles of success and this came about because of this this was sort of triggered by this quote from you know attributed to Woody Allen that 80% of success is just showing up. Right, so 80% of success is just showing up. So I was reading an article about this where this quote has been attributed to so many different people, but they went back over the research and even Woody Allen has said, yes, he's used that in different times. 80% of life, 90% of success, different things, but 80% of success is just showing up. So it's an interesting one, isn't it? So in other words, just the first thing is you've got to get yourself there, get yourself on the job. And so I was then, uh, that led me to sort of having a read of this particular article, uh, led me to do a bit of research again about the quote myself. And I found a, um, a, a couple of articles, one of them in particular was that I found interesting from uh, Entrepreneur Magazine, where they were saying, well, all right, if, you know, what are your thoughts? Let us know your thoughts. Is it just showing up? If, if indeed that's the truth, we've just got to show up. And, and I do believe that's part of it. We've just got to be there because if we don't show up, then nothing can get done. So uh, it's an interesting one, but there, I do believe there's more to this formula than just showing up. And so this article that, um, that was in Entrepreneur Magazine actually uh, sort of looked at that and said that, they believed if 80% is showing up, then 20% is definitely following up. And obviously they were dealing in more of a sales arena and all that sort of thing. But so I thought about that. Well, what do you think there? So 80% is showing up to get the job done. 20%, I would assert that the word is follow through. So follow up is very much a sales thing. So like you, you do something and then you follow up on that and then it's over. 
follow through is something where you know you you are someone who continues through with your promises you are someone who can you know who um makes good on their promises so show up and follow through and then i thought well hang on so that's what the entrepreneur magazine said show up and follow through i thought that's not everything because lots of people show up lots of people follow through that i just felt like there was something missing in that formula 80 percent of success is showing up that might be true then we've got to follow through on what we promise what we do what we start what's missing i decided that number two and it was triggered by Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street. Now he became famous. Um, the movie written about, you know, book written, books written by him, and a movie done uh, about his whole crazy story, the Wolf of Wall Street. So I'm not necessarily recommending the movie. I read the books, have seen the movie, but his story is very interesting in that the first day on the job, um, when he was selling these penny stocks. He actually went away and spent hours crafting the perfect script before he got in the phone. And um, they've actually that people signed like um, motivational psychologists, business psychologists have actually studied him, and they've said that he put more preparation into creating the perfect script and 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 envisioning the whole process rolling out in his mind that no one else in any of the testing put as much time as him and yet everyone was considered to be a born salesperson so what was the missing thing here show up show up prepared is what i decided was the the next thing so be prepared so there's three simple steps 80% of success is showing up. Yep, believe you there, Woody. Number two would be show up prepared. Show up prepared. And number three would be follow through on your promises. Follow through on what you said you do. Follow through on your decisions. Follow through on yourself. Follow through on the goals that you set for yourself. Don't give up on you. Sound like a pretty simple uh, success plan? Show up, be prepared follow through. Three simple principles for success. Let's jump on into um, the principle of wise now. And in this particular one, we were going to be introducing you to Dr. Joe Dispenza, who's going to talk to you about the choice we all have, but only few apply this choice. The choice we all have, but only few apply. And uh, many of you may have seen Dr. Joe Dispenza in many different movies, like What the Bleep Do We Know, Down the Rabbit Hole, all sorts of different things. And he's a neuroscientist, um, epigenetics um, researcher, somebody who talks about the power of the brain to make changes and the decisions that we do, like just like I talked about earlier in, in the healthy section with, with um, epigenetics, the decisions that we make today change our future moments powerfully. So let's have a look at this um, clip from Dr. Joe Dispenza. Your brain is organized to reflect everything you know in your life. Your brain is a record of the past. It's an artifact mm -hmm. of everything you've learned and experienced in this mo uh, moment. The feelings and emotions are the end product of past experiences and we can remember experiences better because we remember how they feel. So most people wake up in the morning and they start remembering all their problems. And those problems are connected to certain people and certain things at certain times and places. The moment they start thinking about those problems, they're thinking in the past. Those problems have an emotion associated with them and the moment they start feeling those emotions, the body is the unconscious mind, doesn't know the difference between an experience that's creating an emotion and the emotion the person's fabricating by thought alone. Now, thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body. And how you think and how you feel creates your state of being. So most people's entire state of being, when they start their day, is already in the past. So you have a choice. The choice is, you're either defined by a vision of the future, or you're defined by the memories of the past. 
And when you decide to say, okay, I'm going to change, and you decide one thing, I'm not going to eat this food, I'm going to wake up earlier, uh, I'm going to do something aerobic, I'm not going to have mm -hmm. sugar after six o'clock, whatever it is, yep. the person, whatever choice a person makes, the moment you make a choice to do something differently, and the hardest part about change is not making the same choice as you did the day before, get ready, because it's going to feel uncomfortable. Right. It's going to feel unfamiliar. There's going to be some uncertainty and unpredictability, and that's the moment the game is on. Yes. So then most people, their, their body has been conditioned emotionally to be the mind. So now the, so the, the body says, wow, uh, I'd rather hang on to my guilt mm -hmm. than take a chance in possibility. I'd rather live in fear yes. than trust in the unknown. So, yep. so once the person feels uncomfortable, the body goes, whoa, wait a second, uh, we're out of the program here. And body starts influencing the mind. That's right. So it says, start tomorrow, you'll never change, right. you don't have the money to do this, you're not good enough, your mother told you you were this, your yeah. father's fault, it's your ex's fault. Mm -hmm. You know, all of the voices that mm -hmm. come up. Now here's the deal, if you respond to those voices, those same thoughts as if they're true, by the way, they're always going on behind right. the scenes of your awareness, but right. now they're amplified because you're outside your comfort zone. You believe in that thought. That thought's gonna lead to the same choice, which is gonna lead to the same behavior, which is gonna create the same experience and produce the same emotion. Mm -hmm. And the person's gonna say, this feels right. Yes. No, 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 that feels familiar. Going from the old self to the new self is a neurological, it's a biological, it's a chemical, it's a hormonal, it's a genetic death of the old self. Mm -hmm. And people will say to me, in that void, in that unknown, mm -hmm. I can't predict my future. And I'll say to them, the best way to predict your future is to create it. Not that. from the known, but from the unknown. I love it. So close your eyes now and think about that vision. Mm. Once you start thinking about that vision of your future, you're activating the creative centers in your brain. Mm -hmm. And naturally, mm -hmm. you begin to think about putting yourself in the scene. Yes. And the act of doing that, when you're truly passionate and truly present, the moment you're defined by that vision, when the thought in your mind becomes the experience, mm -hmm. you begin to feel the emotion of the event before it's made manifest. Yes. Now, you're giving your body mm -hmm. a sampling, a taste I of the it. future. And now, if a thought and a feeling create a new state of being, you're combining a clear intention with an elevated emotion, mm -hmm. and now you're beginning to change your biology, and you're seeing a whole new landscape that you could never see before, because you're no longer viewing your future through the lens of the past. I love this. Now, this, this requires then something really specific, because most people will wait for their, their, uh, their wealth to feel abundance. They'll right. wait for their success to feel empowered. They'll wait for their new relationship yep. to feel love. They'll, They'll get all these things when. Yeah, right. so, so, so think about that. The absence of getting those things causes people to live in lack their entire life. That's right. And so they're waiting for something outside of them to change how they feel inside Instantly. of them. And if they're not creating a new life, then they're not pr applying the proper principles, then they keep all their manifestations, all their dreams at, at arm's length. Well, think about this. If yeah. you get up feeling gratitude, if you get up feeling empowered, if you get up feeling whole, if you get up feeling unlimited, mm -hmm. yeah. why, would you, why would you worry about whether it was gonna come or not? You would feel like it already happened. Interesting, hey? <laughs> so, the choice that you have, according to Dr. Joe Dispenza, and that we're talking about here in WISE, is are you going to be defined by the vision of your future, or are you going to be defined by memories of your past? Your choice. So that's, you know, we're dealing with healthy, wealthy, wise here, whether that's related to your physical health and well-being, whether that's related to your financial situation, or whether that's related to your own personal growth and development, whatever that means for you, don't be defined by your past. Create the future. The best way to see the envision the future is to create it. So it's interesting there when we when we think about that, of course we have that habitual rut that we can be in. We all do it, me too, <laughs> of where we see the problems in the past and all that sort of thing, rather than looking past that. And I think what Dr. Joe really went through there about the discomfort, that's an interesting thing. Because when we start doing something differently, 
we're going to, it's outside of our comfort zone. It's going to feel uncomfortable. And so, you know, this whole, um, this whole concept of, you know, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life means that people feel as though it should be easy and that that it's not going to be uncomfortable. When you're breaking the paradigm, though, and forging ahead to create a new you, that's not necessarily comfortable, as Dr. Joe uh, mentioned there. And so the, we call that going, we, we call that in terms of our internal stuff when we do courses, the income breakthrough challenge. When we're helping people to break through from an income point of view, it's that what we call the terror barrier, what many people like Bob Proctor refers to as the terror barrier. We step back into safety rather than breaking through to that new level, whether it be health and an exercise program, whether it be finances or whether it be some aspect of our own personal growth and development. So take that on. Think about this, uh, that for the week. Am I being, am I being, um, uh, uh, really, am I being, what's the word I'm looking for? Defined. Am I being defined by my past or defined by my vision? Okay. Am I being defined by the memories of the past or defined by my vision for the future? Well, that's a powerful thing to think about as we start the year. So we've just been saying it's Happy New Year. It's 2020. It's time to get that really clear vision about what you want and what a great, you know, great thought process to start the year with. To really say, am I going to be defined by my past or am I going to be defined by my, by my visions of the future? Really take that on and have a think about it. So, look, congratulations for being with us here on the first show of 2020. Uh, love to hear any of your insights, inspirations, things that you've really got from going through that particular material. And, look, I would encourage you to go back at this time of year too and take a look at a previous episode we did where we covered Newton's laws of New Year's resolutions. And this is a bit of a fun uh, look at, you know, the how we can stick you know, how we can encourage you to stick with your goals and New Year's resolutions. And so look, as far as sticking to your goals and sticking to New Year's resolutions and getting the job done, what we've found is for your best journey along the way, you'll want a plan, you'll want some specific solutions, you'll want guidance, and it's more fun if you do it with the community around you. And that's what we provide here in the Savvy Team. So, you know, whatever it is that you're looking to achieve in 2020, as far as health improvement, lifestyle improvement, we can definitely guide you there. So reach out to us. Let's get you started. Let's get you on the path to hitting your goals. So do let us know, how can we help you? We do have a handy survey to help you, uh, you know, with that intake as becoming part of the community. So fill that out and talk with a wellness guide here in the Savvy Team and then request an invitation into our community. I'm sure you'll be glad you did. Some of the things that we've been covering there, talking about, uh, talking about, you know, weight loss and wellness and and all of these sorts of things. It's I just want to give you again a brief overview of what is, what are some of the things that you can start with. Well, we certainly encourage you to reach for the Eat Savvy Diet and look at the twelve steps to get started on the Eat Savvy Diet. And then there is a free download for you. There's also master classes, heaps more information uh, if you'd like to really look at that and. Treat it as a challenge. Spend, you know, do a 30-day challenge and see what results that you can you can achieve. And we do have some support going on with people participating in a 30-day challenge around that too. And even better is if you can couple that with our wellness program, our detox wellness program. Okay. If you're looking to shed some excess fat, then we have a couple of programs, the rapid fat loss and the body transformation challenge so they might be something that uh, you're looking you know that could guide you along and help you achieve those goals and of course there's something for everyone in the action plans and wellness plans that we have so here in the savvy team you know we really are committed to making you know to making your journey to this high level of wellness a breeze and so together let's make 2020 your best year yet 
You know, what is it that you've really been wanting to achieve? What is it that you've been wishing and hoping you could get done in terms of wellness improvement? Let's do it together. Let's make 2020 the year that you get into the best shape of your life. So that's it for me. Until next time, until the next Healthy Wealthy Wise show, it's Corey Sievers here encouraging you to be savvy.